Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I'm Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to learn about rank size rule concept which is part of urban settlement system. Now the concept of primate city we have already learned in the previous lecture. So if you have not watched it, do watch it before this lecture because they have a connection. So before we begin into this concept of rank size rule, urban settlement system, its application, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss this concept of rank size rule. Now what is this rule all about? So this concept of rank size rule in the settlement system was actually given by or suggested by George Kingsley Ziff in 1949. Now remember in 1939 the concept of primate city came primate city concept by Mark Jefferson and also since then more of quantitative techniques were applied to analyze the locational aspects of settlements and several other things. So when this concept came it was a statistics driven concept. So if you observe this rule as we say rank size rule or rank size concept predicts what if the settlements in a country are ranked by population size. Remember in rank size rule the ranking is on the basis of population size. As in primate city, the population size of the primate city and the second city we were talking about in terms of primacy index. Here, the population of a settlement ranked n will be 1 by nth, that is 1 by nth of the size of largest settlement. So this concept in terms of statistical method in geography, we should understand. And what is the formula to understand? Ziff's law. What is it? Pn is equal to P1 by n. P1 is primate city population, the city which is primate. Remember primate concept we talked about? So the biggest single largest city in a country or in a region, that is the primate city. So its rank and its population size, right? So n is the rank and Pn is population of nth ranking city. It means if this is this situation, this is the order. So this is P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and so on. Right? So this n is basically this order, this rank that we say. Right? So in this way, we can understand that this rule helps us to compare between the primate city, the single largest city and the city in given order of the n, right, of the rank. So Ziff studied urban pattern in many countries before actually propounding this theory. And giving this law, he found out that it works better in larger countries like US and Soviet Union. And it also works well in countries with long urban history. That's why he said that the long urban history, the developmental history is very important for a country so that you'll have a big city and small cities in subsequent ways right so what we observe there is a question for us to understand using this particular formula can you answer this question right so first read the question carefully according to rank size rule if the largest city in a country has a population of 1 million then fourth city remember the fourth largest city in that country would have population of approximately how much this is the question so we'll be talking about the answer of this question and explanation at the end so keep continuing watching and if you have solved this question do answer in the comment box that what is going to be the right option Right. So now let's look into the dynamics of this rank size rule and understand in simple way why this long developmental history and what is the relationship of these primate city with the next order cities. So if you observe in this particular flow diagram population time and rank three things are given and what you observe the dynamics is dependent upon this three factors here. So what you have administrative organization, transport network, industrial development and commercial spread. These are the four pillars of urban development that we know. And what happens? Remember the city size if you observe here next, then next, then next and then next. You see this particular of rank order out here. Right. And there is a connection. There is an interlinkage between them. Right. So Hamlet to village to large town to a bigger town to major town to a city. 
Remember the hierarchy of urban settlements in the previous lectures we talked about? This hierarchy of urban settlements can be well understood if we understand the concept of primate city and also rank size rule. How they have these interlinkages. So population size is increasing if you go this side and also rank is decreasing. Why rank is decreasing? Because it will be nth rank and it will be first rank. So what you observe, first rank cities are biggest cities. So it will not be too many n numbers. It will be only one, isn't it? So that's the relationship in this particular flow diagram that you can understand in simple way. Now let's talk about factors affecting this rank size rule. Which factors are very important for it? So the first factor is the administrative organization, transportation linkages, industrial development and commercial spread. These four things. Right? These are the major factors that helps a city grow and also it also has a major role in changing rank size relationship between first city, the second city and the third city and so on. Their linkages are dependent upon these factors. Then what else we have is the disproportionate development of these facilities cause variation in the centripetal forces. Now what is a centripetal force? A force that brings inward right towards the center when people and all those resources are attracted and it is here in the center the concentration is here. So the variations in terms of these particular factors will lead to the variation in centripetal forces which is involved in the growth of settlement. To grow a big primate city, centripetal forces have to be of the greatest order, greatest intensity. All the concentration of wealth, resources, people, everything at one city will lead it to become a primate city. Right. So what you understand here, the population change in a center within a certain time interval also changes the rank of a center. So rank of a center is dependent upon this gradual development process and centripetal forces of city forming forces. Right. So what you observe, the concept of close proximity. Remember, close proximity is very important in terms of where are the resource concentrated. Right. What are the factors of production which is concentrated in terms of economic activities? So if this changes, remember it has changed today. Why? Because of introduction of quick mechanized transport. Now it's not important to be close to this city. Even if resources are here and the city is here, this distance does not matter anymore. So this distance annihilation that we say because of rise of information technology, transport development has led to the changing structure across the world. Right. So, for example, people generally move from one village to another on foot and it involves certain amount of time. But now what has happened? Bigger towns have train facility that people travel quickly and development of airways has connected one city to another city now. Right. So it become more quick. So connections between the city is leading to changing rank size rules. Now, if you compare primate city concept with rank size rule, there are certain things to be understood. Remember, primate city talked about the relation between only first and second rank cities majorly. But here rank size rule does not say only first order cities and second order cities in terms of rank. Rather it is concerned with all the urban centers development in a country. So it is largely a bigger concept and it has wide scale applicability in that way. right? So the primate city was more of a sociological theory but this is more of a geographical and developmental theory and its explanation, its testing. Primate city signifies agglomeration effect and concentration of factors while rank size rule also talks about de-agglomeration factors which factors are distributed or diffused across the country so that the centers are also developing in rank wise right so it's expressive of also centrifugal forces at the same time not just centripetal forces and also remember the primacy was based on the agrarian economy, the former colonial status and several other topics that we learned. But here the new age concept can also be integrated in rank size rule, which was absent in primate city concepts. So these are certain, you can say that these are certain differentials or differentiators between primate city and rank size rule. So when rank size rule came 10 years later, it was published, then it actually validated the concept of primate city and also made it more applicable for developing countries of the world as well right so what you observe here rank size rule addresses two vital questions what are these two questions the first is why larger settlements are fewer in number remember we talked about it in hierarchy of settlements that as you go up in the pyramid the frequency is lesser number of cities become very few if you go in higher order centers why this happens and what is the relationship between larger and smaller settlements is there a linkage between the pyramidal structure that's what we understand through this rank size rule so to understand this we must understand two forces one is called forces of diversification 
unification centrifugal forces and one is forces of unification centripetal forces so first of all is forces of diversification now remember location of these small settlements in generally determined by proximity factor nearness factor to the resources or raw material right so that is why predominantly it develops around that particular locale or locality where resources are available where water is available where land is available right so this is called forces of diversification where proximity factor is more but what happens as society advances secondary production starts to take place on the primary activity and then manufacturing starts to grow making that city bigger 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 and bigger because of diversification of economy so secondary economic activities generate settlements of large size in this particular case but remember forces of unification also is important at the same time so in contrast to forces of diversification the forces of unification right bringing in from all side unifying it and then making it bigger this kind of force result in emergence of few large settlement right so forces of diversification will lead to sporadic urban growth but concentrated urban growth is based on unification forces only primarily on tertiary economic activities service activities right so what you observe in recent times a wide range of secondary and tertiary activities have led to development of big cities world cities megalopolis all around the world so unification forces centripetal forces concentrating forces become more important in that regard so this explanation is given through rank size rule concept and let's look into the degree of primacy explained through this rank size rule here so what is it if i the index is greater than one it means where the degree of primacy is higher then if it is between zero and one it means existence of centrifugal forces is more and a balance between these two forces will lead to the ideal state where i is equal to zero where unification and diversification forces are balanced right so this is the curve analysis of population if you say this log analysis so this graph tells us about population and log of the rank so what you observe this straight line is the ideal scenario which is perfect rank size rule right but if you go above this or if you go below this what do you see if you go below this primacy is more primacy curve remember the values would be that one big city exists and then next city is in terms of proportionate relationship with the bigger city right but if you go above this ideal scenario this binary curve primacy does not exist now this is what is quantification of the sociological concept of primate city development that happened through rank size rule concept right so what you observe the contribution of rank size rule in regional planning or we can say understanding regional disparities and several other concepts so there are two points to understand here first that it helps in interpreting the relationship between rank and population size of the settlements in a given state in a given country or a region or it helps analyzing in settlement networks how one settlement is linked to the other settlement what is the linkages between them this is one important thing and the next two important points are that it helps us explain the settlements with respect to their economic activities the primary secondary tertiary activities their concentration and how the city is growing so urban growth models will have the application of this concept it explains imbalance disparities between the settlements due to rapid growth in a particular center these concepts help us to understand urban settlement system in a better way that's why rank size rule is a very important concept alongside primate city concept in urban settlement systems so what you observe there are certain exceptions in the system as well where primate cities are there in smaller countries remember there could be a pattern disrupt for example france and mexico do not follow rank size rule in that particular way where one or more than city size groupings are missing for example australia and canada there also this rule does not apply so it's not a universally applied rule that we say but remember rank size rule also has an application in india from the study of kazi ahmed in 1971 in primate city also we looked into rank size rule application in india has in two groups if you observe one is where rule is followed which states are there remember punjab up haryana kerala here rank size rule has no primacy right so states where this rule is followed has no primacy but rank size rule is there in rank you can think about relationship between the first rank city the second rank city and the third rank city it not may hold the primacy right primacy is about proportionately twice or more than two times at least 
Remember, so what you see, where rank size rule is applicable, primacy may not be applicable at the same time. So what you find out, that rank size rule has no universal application, but it acts as a yardstick, a measuring stick. To do what? To develop, to understand the relationship of urban center and their functional integration and understanding of the development of transport, communication, industries in a country and how it is useful in understanding socio-economic aspirations of a nation and their people as well at the same time. That's why it has a great importance in urban development studies till now. And finally, let's answer the question that we asked in the beginning. So according to rank size rule, the population is here that is 1 million and the four Fourth largest city in that country would have what population approximately if we apply that rule. So did you find out the answer? What is the answer? Let's look into this solution. So rank size rule states nth largest city in a given country will have 1 by n of the population of the largest city. So the population of largest city is 1 million. So it will be 1 by n. The rank of the city that we need to look into is fourth. So it's 1 by 4 into 1 million. That is about 250,000 people. So the answer A is correct. So I hope you have given the correct answer by now in the comment box. So now when we have discussed the various aspects of rank size rule, its application in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different other aspects of settlement geography. So stay tuned, stay safe keep checking the playlists, keep watching the videos and do share the videos with others as well.